friends welcome to susan and john math tube in this video we are going to learn about cylinder and of course type 2 cylinder in the last two videos we learned about type 1 cylinder that's a right circular cylinder okay and in this case what they do is they will give you two things one is the guiding curve it can be a circle or ellipse normally they ask only these two things for you or it can be any standard conic section okay and then they will give you the details about the generating line basically we need the uh, direction ratios of the generating line i hope you still remember what's a guiding curve so just imagine an ellipse and let's imagine the center of the ellipse and the axis okay i have defined these things in the last videos okay now generating line means any line parallel to the axis that's why I told you we need the direction ratios of the generating line uh, so that it stays parallel to the axis and it should touch actually this picture is not correct it should touch the guiding curve now imagine if you draw all such lines if you draw all such lines you'll be able to imagine that cylinder or you'll be able to visualize that cylinder okay so what we do is we learn a process here for those students who can understand the logic it will be very good if you understand the logic. So let's say we have the guiding curve. And let us imagine this is our generating line. So what we do is we take the locus point to be x1, y1, z1. We take the locus point to be x1, y1, z1. So remember this point will be a point on the cylinder and hence it will be on the generating line. And remember we are going to find the relation between x1, y1, z1 so that later on we can generalize. So this is what you do. If you want you can learn this as a procedure. You can write the procedure. So take one point x1, y1, z1 on the generating line. Now look at this. Uh, I told you uh, like what you call the axis or a line parallel to the generating line will be given. So basically we need the uh, what you call direction ratios or direction cosines whatever is given so if the direction ratios are uh, a b c let's say uh, what you call somehow you'll be able to find it when you look at the question you'll understand that now using these two what we do is we write the equation of the generating line but remember write the so the second second thing to do is write the equation of the generating line in parametric form that's very important you must write the equation in parametric form so i hope you still remember parametric form gives us access to every point in a line parametric form basically gives us access to every point in a line now by looking at the picture are you able to understand uh, like what you call the generating line will touch our guiding curve so what we do next is we plug in this parametric form into the guiding curve. So what we actually did is we made a line and we, we are making sure that that line will touch the guiding curve. Point number one, call one point on the guiding curve to be x1, y1, z1. Then write the equation of the generating line in parametric form then plug in that parametric form into the guiding curve okay now once you do that uh, what do you call you will get the relation between x1 y1 z1 in terms of the parameter so now your job is to destroy the parameter so remember whatever we introduce in a problem eliminate those quantities and you'll get the locus so what is the next thing to do eliminate the parameter eliminate the parameter and the last thing to do is you have to generalize it that is we started with the locus point x1 y1 z1 now we know that uh, like what you call all the generating lines will have the same relation so we generalize it with the point x y z okay now when we do the problem you'll be able to understand very clearly so let's do one problem very fast okay so please write the question find the equation of a cylinder whose generators are parallel to the line x by 1 is equal to y by minus 2 
is equal to z by 3 and the guiding curve is given by and the guiding curve is given by 3x square plus 2y square is equal to 1 comma z equal to 4. So look at this. Right now you have to understand that we are in 3 dimension. Now look at this. I am sure that you might remember this equation from your uh, grade 12. It represents an ellipse. Now look at this part z equal to 4. So remember z equal to 0 represents our xy plane. So z equal to 4 means it's a xy plane or a plane parallel to the xy plane but 4 units up. So for example if this is our x axis and if this is our y axis and if this represents the height and depth deciding axis the z axis look at this if you look at this ellipse you can see that that ellipse belongs to the xy plane like we studied long back but right now the ellipse under our discussion right now the ellipse under our discussion it's four units above it's like four units above so basically our ellipse will be somewhere here our ellipse will be somewhere here, 4 units up. Okay, now look at the procedure. So what do we do? So let's make a rough picture. So look at this. We have the standard ellipse here. Now just imagine it went 4 units up. Now look at this. Now we have a generator here. This is the generating line. So how do we start? Go for the procedure. Okay, let x1, y1, z1 be a point on the generator. Let x1, y1, z1 be a point on the generator. Now look at this. Our generators are parallel to this line. That means the direction ratios of our generators will be 1, minus 2, 3 or a multiple of 1, minus 2, 3. So we are going to write the equation of the generating line. That will be equation of generating line. What will be that? x minus x1 by 1 is equal to y minus y1 by minus 2 is equal to z minus z1 by is equal to t. t is some parameter. Because I told you in the procedure, write the equation of the generating line in parametric form. Some people do it without parametric form also, but I feel that will be more comfortable for the students. Now what we do is, we find x, y, z, so that we get the parametric form. So x is, uh, you can equate the first and the parameter. So we get t plus x1 or x1 plus t and minus 2t plus y1 and z equal to 3t plus z1. Okay, so the parametric form is x equal to x1 plus t y is equal to y1 minus 2 into t, z equal to z1 plus 3 into t. Now look at this. We know the equation of generating line in parametric form. And parametric form gives access to every point in the line for different different values of t. Now think about it. For some value of t, it will belong to the guiding uh, curve. So what we do is now we plug in now we plug in this parametric form into the guiding curve. So what's the guiding curve? So please write the guiding curve is 3x square plus 2y square is equal to 1 comma z equal to 4. What does it mean? It's the same ellipse that you learned in class 12. There is an ellipse in xy plane. But the second condition tells you it is no more in xy plane but parallel to xy plane. Or let's imagine the ellipse went 4 units up, 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 up. Okay, anyway, that doesn't matter. All you do is you plug in this parametric coordinate over here. So we get 3 into, what can we uh, do with this x? Yeah, x1 plus t the whole square plus 2 into y1 minus 2t the whole square is equal to 1 comma, what is the z value? Yeah, z1 plus 3t is equal to 4. Now, if you look at the procedure, I told you, look at this. Now we got the relation. 
Now our job is to destroy all the things that we introduced. We introduced T, the parameter. We introduced X1, Y1, Z1. You, you finish off with those things and that is the required equation. Removing the parameter is very easy. Look at this condition. So tell me what is the value of T? 4 minus Z1. So T will be 4 minus Z1 by 3. Now plug it here. So we get 3 into x1 plus 4 minus z1 by 3 the whole squared plus 2 times um, y1 minus double this value. Can you see 2 into t? Double the value. That will be 8 minus 2 z1 by 3 the whole square equal to 1. Okay, now look at this. This is the equation of our generating line. But look at this. Uh, once more, let me explain the logic. What we did is we found the equation of a line passing through x1, y1, z1. And then we made sure that that line stays parallel uh, and what you call parallel to the axis and it sticks to the guiding curve. Now what we are doing is we destroyed the parameter so we can see the relation very clearly. Now imagine you have another generating line. You have another generating line. You have another generating line. You are going to get the same relation. So we can write taking locus or generalizing. The required equation is 3 into. Tell me what will be the required equation. 4 minus z by 3 the whole square. Plus 2 into y minus 8 minus 2 z by 3 the whole square equal to 1. Never forget equation means the relation satisfied by each and every point in a system. Okay, that's it. That's it. It's so easy, isn't it? Okay, now you can try one more problem. Uh, the problem goes like, find the equation of a cylinder, find the equation of a cylinder whose guiding curve is x square plus 2hxy plus y square plus 2gx is equal to 0, z equal to 0 and the axis is given by x by L equal to y by M is equal to z by N. It's going to be very easy. I'll give you a hint. By the way, uh, you can simplify this. You can take LCM. You're a bachelor student, so I'm going to leave that part for you. Okay, now look at this. What we do is we are given a some conic section so here and it's on the xy plane now they have given the equation of the axis anyway i'm not interested in the equation of the axis but i'm interested in the direction ratios or cosines anyway the direction cosines are given lmn now how should i start any problem what i do is i take the generating line and I'm going to take a point x1, y1, z1 in the generating line. And since the generating line will be parallel to the axis, its direction cosines can be taken as LMN. Okay, so what's the equation of the generating line? x minus x1 by L equal to y minus y1 by M is equal to z minus z1 by N is equal to T. Because our job is to write the generating line in parametric form. So we get x is equal to uh, lt plus x1. So that will be x1 plus lt. y is equal to y1 plus mt. And z equal to uh, z1 plus nt. Now what do we do? We make sure uh, the generating line touches the guiding curve. So that means we are going to replace x with x1 plus lt. So please write the equation as x1 plus lt the whole square plus 2h x1 plus lt into y1 plus mt plus y1 plus mt the whole square plus 2g into x1 plus lt equal to 0 and the condition is given z equal to 0. So that means now remember <clears throat> what is our job? Our job is to destroy the parameter. So what is the value of t? Minus z1 by n. You plug it here and that will be the 
generating line so we get x1 so t can be replaced by yeah so that will be minus l z1 by n the whole square plus 2 h into x1 minus l z1 by h the whole by n the whole square plus 2 h x1 minus l z1 by n y1 minus m z1 by n plus y1 minus m z1 by n the whole square plus 2g x1 minus l z1 by n the whole square equal to 0. Now what should we do? We have to replace x1 y1 z1 by x y z. So you can write the required equation is or the locus is x minus l z by n the whole square plus 2h x minus l z by n the whole square and y minus etc 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 sorry about that there is no whole square okay that's it and later on take the lcm if you want to try you can try one more problem and you can put in the comment box whether you uh, are able to solve it or not okay so your job is very simple find the equation of a cylinder with axis so the axis is given that means you can find the direction ratios of the generating line so the axis is x minus 1 by 1 is equal to y minus 1 by 2 is equal to z by 3 and the guiding curve is x square plus 2 y square is equal to 1 z equal to 0 okay try it now itself so in the next video i'll be back with cones okay so i hope you understood and you like the video so i'll be back very soon so till then my friends bye